Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to Carpe Diem Sailing. If you're new to the channel, my name's Marco. I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor. And in today's video, I'll be analyzing a challenging single-handed docking departure. Welcome to episode 42, Single-Handed Docking Close Call. A few weeks ago, I posted a video of a challenging single-handed departure with a couple of powerboats ahead of me. It was a challenging situation with the two powerboats there, plus I had uh, a downwind, uh, I had the wind behind me coming from a stern. Um, I did manage to pull it off, but it was a close call. I did get close to those boats. Now, knowing my boat and knowing my skills, I was pretty confident that I was going to pull it off. Having said that, as one of my Navy buddies said after he watched the video, it was a hero to zero scenario. So yes, I did pull it off, but it could have gone potentially quite badly wrong. It did generate, that video did generate um, quite a bit of critical feedback and uh, all of it constructive. So I thank you for that. And I want to look at four of those comments now. And then um, we're going to talk about this video. I did say that I would revisit it. Some people in the comments also said that they were um, they wanted to have they would have liked to have seen it after I took it down. So you will get to see it again. We will watch the video again, and then I want to deconstruct it and talk about what I planned to do, what I should have done, and how much better that would have worked. And so the springing off uh, definitely is something to consider. And I did go out and try springing off, and we'll talk about that. A little bit later. I also have some animations we're going to look at. And uh, with that, let's get to those comments and uh, and then we'll get to the, uh, the video. From David, I'm a new subscriber and this new series is ideal for me as I'm keen to sail my 28-footer single-handed. Thanks for doing it. I found your tips on prep and planning very useful. However, I felt your plan for accelerating downwind towards moored boats had the potential to go very expensively wrong. My heart was beating fast just watching. I hope you will be able to give examples of leaving berths single-handed when it's not quite such a tight spot, such as reversing from finger berths, springing off, etc., as well as coming back in single-handed. I will watch the series with interest. From Antony, I think this was a dangerous strategy. Might be worth reconsidering this video given the high quality of your other advice. In my opinion, springing out the bow would be infinitely better, and if this is not possible due to windage, then a solo departure should be reconsidered. Another option might be to warp the yacht into a better position. Sorry, but I think this one is bad advice. Megan asks, can you demonstrate backing against a spring line to pivot out the bow? And finally from Richard, I would have used a spring from the cockpit forward round the cleat ashore and back to the cockpit. Put a fender on the aft, then reverse on the spring and the bow would have come out much further. Then, when you are happy with the angle, put the boat in forward, let go one end of the spring, and pull it on board while motoring forward. So quite a few good points there. As I said, we're going to look at springing. And then the point that Anthony made, which was reconsider leaving, is, is very valid. So single-handed or with crew, just, you know, if the conditions aren't right and it's going to lead to problems, then just wait it out and go you know, when the conditions are a bit better. So now let's take a look at those animations and then we'll look at the docking, uh, the departure itself, and I'm gonna do a bit of a play-by-play -play, and then we'll talk about springing off. When single-handing, since you're doing all the jobs, it is important to prioritize. The steps you will see in this animation are my preference for leaving the dock in forward with a wind from a stern and what I intended to do in the video. Ordinarily, with crew, both spring lines are cast off first, but since I'm single-handed, the order is modified based on the conditions. First, I cast off the forward spring, since the pressure is from aft, making this line redundant. Then, as long as the wind remains astern, the after spring will keep the boat against the dock, so I cast off my bow line. If the wind is not too strong, I cast off the after spring. I could set up a separate spring if the wind was stronger or if I intended to spring off. I then harden the stern brushed line, bringing the stern of the boat as tight to the dock as I can, 
which angles the bow out. Springing off achieves the same purpose as you will see later in the video, but I like the simplicity of simply hardening the stern brush line, especially single handed. When the stern is in as far as I can get it, I cast off the stern brush line and step aboard. I then drive straight away from the dock and start turning away from the dock as soon as my stern is clear. If I'm being blown towards the power boats, I steer towards them to swing my stern clear. Have a roving fender handy, just in case, and remember if you're not comfortable with the conditions, wait for a better window. Now let's take a look at this in calm conditions from overhead. Having pulled the stern in as far as I can, pointing the bow out away from the dock, I step on, drive straight away and accelerate with a short burst to turn away from the dock as soon as my stern is clear. This is what actually happened, as you'll see in a moment. I hardened the stern brush line, pulling in the stern, but I did not pull it in hard enough, which meant that my bow was not angled far enough out. This meant that I could not turn away from the dock until my stern was clear, which put me very close to the power boats. I steered towards the power boats to swing my stern clear, which is the only reason I didn't hit them. Now let's watch the actual departure starting with walking the boat back to give me some extra room. Ordinarily, I'm not a fan of walking the boat, you know, more than necessary, but sometimes it is necessary. And so in this case, I'm going to be leaving here single-handed and we do have space right in here. And so the boat is up there. The wind is actually from a stern, which is going to push me up against these guys here. And it probably wouldn't be so bad. I could probably pull out of this spot reasonably well if it wasn't for the fact that these two power boats are actually rafted up. So to get clear of these, uh, of that second boat, get the angle out and then clear that second boat's anchor with the wind blowing me onto them is going to be really tricky, especially single-handed. So what I am going to do is I am going to walk the boat back to the very end to give myself some room. As I mentioned, I'm not usually a fan of walking a boat. I believe that it is unnecessary in most cases, and you are better off relying on boat handling skills. But there are situations such as this one where walking a boat back to give you room is the prudent choice. There were some comments regarding the potential difficulty of walking the boat back single-handed against a stern wind. This is a very valid point. A suggestion was also made to simply back away from the power boats to gain the room. The problem for me in this particular scenario is that my prop walks to port and I did not have enough room to overcome the prop walk. And then we're going to angle the boat outwards and I'm going to drive straight away from the dock. So we're departing single-handed from this dock and as you saw in the previous clip we did actually walk the boat back to give me some room from those boats ahead. Now as I said the wind is coming from a stern and so this spring line right now, the after spring is actually holding us from going forward. This spring line right now is is redundant because the wind, the pressure is coming from aft. So I'm going to cast this spring line off first and then as long as the wind pressure stays from a stern against that spring line it will hold the boat against the dock. So I don't really need this bow line right now. So I'm going to cast this one off as well. I'm going to put it up over top of the railing and have it in reach in case I need it again. If it was blowing really hard I could have a completely separate spring line doing this job and then I would disconnect, I would uh, cast off my my breast stern breast line first and leave the spring on. So once this is off, I have my roving fender handy in case I have trouble with those boats up ahead. And what I want to do is have the boat pointed as far out as I can. So far, so good. So I'm going to slide this fender back a bit and leverage off this fender. And pull the boat in. But this is where things start to go wrong. I should have pulled the stern of the boat in much more aggressively or sprung the bow out, but as you will see, springing would not have given me that much more angle. And then the trick 
like I've said in my other videos, make sure the helm is centered, put it in gear, and accelerate fast away from the dock, and then start turning as soon as possible. As you just saw, not having enough angle meant that I could not effectively turn away from the dock. So definitely I would not have cut, this would not have worked. Which ultimately put me way too close to the power boats. And the only thing I could do was to steer towards the power boats to swing my stern clear. Ha! I could not have shaved that any closer. That would not have worked if I hadn't walked the boat back. One final point is that when I left the dock, I accelerated to get away from the dock. And as you saw earlier in the video, a burst of speed would have helped me turn. But because I was so close to the dock, I couldn't actually use that burst of speed. So I kept the speed on much longer than I actually should have. So heart's beating a little bit. We did get fairly close to that boat there. But as you saw, I steered away. And then as I got close to it, I steered towards it to swing the stern out and away from that corner. So if anything, single handing, a lot of it is preparation ahead of time and being ready for trouble. And now let's look at springing the boat off both bow and stern. Here we will look at an example of springing off to swing the bow out. With the forward spring made fast to the dock near midships, the engine is shifted into reverse. The boat will move back, taking up the slack in the spring line. When it reaches the end of the line, the stern will swing towards the dock and the bow will swing out. It is important to have a fender aft and to keep the engine in gear throughout the maneuver. Once the maximum angle is reached, the spring line is cast off and forward gear is engaged and the boat drives straight away from the dock. Now let's look at a couple of real life examples of swinging off bow and stern. When it comes to single handing, my personal opinion is to keep things as simple as possible. So in my last video, I showed a way of achieving the angle that we need to get to pull away from the dock by casting off the bow first, because you remember those power boats were just ahead of me, and then pulling in on the stern. I had the fender here just forward of the stern, so I could actually lever off it to, to get me the most angle possible because that's what I really needed is as much angle as possible. Remember I also had wind coming from a stern that was blowing my bow back in towards the dock and towards those power boats. So what I did was to keep things simple and what I've always done is cast off the bow, cast off your spring lines first, cast off the, the lines in the order that I mentioned and then come back here and either pulling on your stern line or in this case I'm pulling on the on the uh, the push pit or the stern pull pit and if you keep pulling the boat will you can see the angle of the bow will keep going out so the idea is to get the stern in as close to the dock as possible pull it in as much as possible and I'm doing this rather than coming out here and pushing the boat out So once I've done that, I have about a 45 degree angle or so. I still have some room to go. I could still keep pulling in. Now remember, I'm by myself. There might be some wind blowing from a stern. So it is a tough situation, right? That was a tough situation that I was in. And it's just realistic that you're going to have that. So this is about as far as I can go by pulling it in manually. In this case now, I simply step onto the boat, make sure my helm is centered, and then I drive away in a burst just to get out away from the dock and then I turn as much as I can so that I don't, you know, but keeping an eye on the corner here so I don't swing into the, uh, into the dock. So that's my preferred method. That's what I've always done. It's always worked for me. There were numerous comments that springing off would have been better and would have worked better and would have been safer. Personally, I've never really been a huge fan of springing a boat this size because it's easily managed. Certainly using spring lines, and I'll show you what I mean by springing off because there were some questions about how you spring off. On a large vessel, yes, that makes sense. 
for me, I have found that my technique here of pulling, the butt, pulling it in like this works just as well. So what I thought I'd do is try springing off just to see if it would work that much better. The thing for me right now, my first thought is that because I'm single-handed, so springing off with a crew is fine, but now I'm single-handed. So the idea is to have your spring line here aft going forward and then I reverse against it. So the idea is that as I'm reversing, the pressure on the cleat on this angle up forward where it's anchored will point my bow out into the fairway. Guys, go ahead. Hi, how you doing? No worries. So you can see I'm having the same effect. I'm slowly, the bow is slowly going out. Now, I have to hold on to this pretty hard because the, bow, the boat's pulling back against the engine here. So I have to hold on to this for one thing. It's still moving out a little bit, inching out a tiny bit. But realistically, it's no further out than what I had when I did it my way by pulling the stern in. So here we're at as far as it'll go. I might try and increase the RPMs. And it's really not doing anything except putting a lot of strain on this line. So this is as far out as I'm going to go. So at this point now, remember, we have wind coming from the stern, wanting to blow my bow back in. At this point, I now have to come down here, grab this line, pull it back, deal with all this friction, get the line in, be careful not to drop it in the water because it will sink and it could foul your prop. And then by the time I put it in gear, the wind has blown me back in. So in conclusion, having done both of them, I still stand by my original method of keeping things simple and having a fender back here and simply pulling the, uh, the stern in. Now again, like I said, this is a 32 foot boat. It weighs about 12,000 pounds. In these conditions, it's manageable. On bigger boats, springing might be your only option. And just to conclude one last point, when it comes to single handing, you're definitely raising the bar. Things are more challenging, there's no doubt about that. And that situation that I was in happened to be one that can be challenging. And there are times where you're gonna get close to boats. So it's up to you to decide whether it's safe and your skills are up to it and the conditions are up to it and all the rest of it. So I hope this helps and I hope it clears up some of those comments, but thank you for all those comments. It was really good because I wouldn't have done this video without them. In these two stills pulled from the video, you can see that springing off did angle the boat out a bit further. Certainly not much further as some comments had suggested. And as I mentioned previously, the added complication of having to retrieve the spring line as I motor away from the dock disqualifies the slight advantage I would get from springing. Having said that, now that you've seen both techniques, you can make the right choice for you. As you will see in the next clip, springing off to angle the stern out is a much different story, and because of the thrust on the rudder, much greater angles are achievable. So now we're going to look at springing forward, because there were comments about how do you spring a boat off. So again, like I said, I'm not a fan of springing because I just want to keep things simple. But they're, you know, it's nice to have in your back pocket in your toolbox to be able to use it. So now we're going to spring off by pulling the bow forward and sticking the stern out. And here we'll also have the benefit of the wash on the rudder to increase our angle. So something that you might find useful to do someday. So once again, cleat it up forward. Right now I've made it fast here. We're not going to be casting it off. I just want to show the principle of springing off and we have a fender up forward. And I'm going to gently put it in forward with the helm centered and the pressure of the line on the bow is going to bring the bow in and it's going to push the stern out. So at this point the stern is still going out a little bit. My helm is centered. And it looks like I've actually stopped. So now if I wanted to, if I had crew, I could get them to, I would go into neutral, take the pressure off the line, they could cast off and step on. 
If I wanted to increase my angle more, I could turn towards the dock, and now the pressure of the rudder, the wash of the rudder would actually move me out. So it's definitely something that could be useful in a very specific tight situation. So in this case, in forward, it can be quite useful. I can actually get quite far out. You know, I might be able to get out at 90 the way it's going right now. So definitely something to have in your back pocket. I had mentioned uh, earlier in my video that um, springing off might be useful for larger vessels and that for me, I don't feel that I need to uh, complicate my life by using it. Um, this is a Beneteau 47.7. I don't know what the displacement is off offhand. I will look it up and put it up on the screen. Uh, belongs to a friend of mine with, uh, who's been sailing his whole life, numerous offshore passages, lots of offshore racing, um, and I was asking him what he thought of the idea of springing off um, with this boat as big as it is, and he said he doesn't, do he doesn't bother with it, it's too complicated. So interestingly enough, he shares my perspective uh, with regards to springing off, but uh, now you've seen both, and uh, it's up to you to decide uh, which one you know, works for you. New episodes go up every second Wednesday at 6 p.m. See you next time when I talk about the benefits of using a snubber on a nylon anchor road. Till then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.